Okay, so here we have the, the ice field with its outlet glaciers, as we just discussed, and the location of the instruments of the uh, Met Tower. So what does that look like? Translate that here. This is the ice field. There's our little research camp. Here's a better picture of it. Um, so we are up there for a week. Uh, this is just as we were getting underway. There's the, the Met Tower um, and other uh, bits and pieces just before we started assembling it. Um, yeah, and that's our little research camp. That's where we live for, um, for the week. Um, just like, like your backcountry skiing or something like that. And like I say, this is right up on top of the ice field. This elevation is about, um, I don't know, 3,300 meters, that sort of thing. It's about 10,000 feet. Um, so the air is uh, starting to get thin. There's another picture of it in the, in the evening. So I got our little areas around the tents. There's a, a nice morning picture. And there's the tower. So that's the, the tower that we ended up setting up on the ice field. So there you can see three levels of wind speed monitoring. Whoops, that's snow depth, um, radiation sensors, and, uh, and so on. All dug down into the snow with a, an anchor that I actually had to build and then guide in, so. And there's another picture of it uh, with me for scale. So it's a, a, a 12 meter tower all told. So it's pretty big. There's a little solar panel. Uh, it has a little battery and uh, it, it transmits information uh, to a satellite called Iridium. Uh, it's, it's not there anymore. This is a few years ago now. And then there, there is a picture of the tower with the camp and then just this, uh, part, this gap in the mountains, that's where uh, Athabasca, the outlet to Athabasca ice field is, or Athabasca glacier, sorry. Okay, and so how do we record the location of this? Well, this is where the, the, the differential GPS comes in. Um, sorry, I have digital there. It's supposed to be differential. That's so it's differential GPS. Uh, and it looks like this. This is just a sample picture, but it's this little white dome. So we're used to GPS is almost looking like fat cell phones or something like that. That's just a handheld GPS, but a differential GPS um, is, is a, an antenna that's about this big around. It's this white thing. And the, the other person that was with us, Mike DeMuth from Natural Resources Canada, he's a glaciologist. He just placed the thing right on the base of the tower and that gets a location that is accurate to within centimeters, but it sits there. It, it sat there for several hours while it queries the satellites again and again and again, and, and just starts to make corrections to sort of hone in on a, uh, an extremely accurate value. Um, now, um, so, and, and this was actually kind of an interesting issue because, um, when we went back to, to work on the tower the following May, um, we couldn't see the tower. It was just a complete sheet of, of white. And so um, this is where we, we learned about, well, we knew about, but, but where the, the difference in precision and, and accuracy uh, really came into play. So the differential GPS location that we had was extremely accurate, right? Like I say, right down to centimeters. But the handheld GPSs, they're, they're not so accurate. They're only accurate to about five meters. Well, so you could take the, the differential GPS location and then draw sort of a five meter circle around it. And that's basically your accuracy. And so we just, we were probing with avalanche poles, which are about three meters, but there could easily have been, uh, more than five meters of snow between us um, and, and the tower. And you know, even if we had, had been right on top of the tower, the tower's kind of got a gantry structure, you could easily go right straight through the tower uh, without ever contacting it. And then you'd move on with your search. 
So uh, we never did find it. Uh, and it's still up there, probably buried under oh, a lot of ice because this part of the ice field is actually accumulating. You know, we're used to glaciers melting, um, but, but the ice, the glacier, the outlet glaciers are melting, but we still have accumulation zones up high on the ice fields, especially on the east side of Columbia. So it has continued to increase the snow depth and after a while that snow gets compressed and, and turns into ice. So the, the tower is being entombed and uh, we won't see it probably for, I don't know, a <laughs> hundred years, maybe several decades at the very least, unfortunately. So, so yes, so that's, uh, that's my engagement with differential GPS. Uh, I'm not a particular expert, but we did use it uh, to mark the location of the, of the site in a real field setting, a research field setting and then uh, try to find it again, but, but we weren't um, successful. Uh, actually, a logical question would be, well, why didn't you take, just set down the differential GPS and then get the, the actual difference between where you happen to put it and where the tower was? And the answer is we didn't have the differential GPS with us because we didn't realize that we would, we would need it. So anyhow, and uh, there's just another picture of me on, uh, this is the same type of installation we had on another ice field called Nahani, Nahani National Park in the Southwest, Southwest, Northwest Territories. Uh, so, okay, uh, and that's, that's all I have. All right, um, yeah, have a good rest of your class. It's almost finished and uh, we're almost finished our first COVID year. So, okay, take care everybody.